Let's do solid solid. Yeah, okay. Uh, so here's an interesting problem for you. Um, so I have a ball, and it begins to slide without rolling on a surface. Um, it's a moment of inertia is given by two fifths mr squared, as usual, because it's a sphere. Um, and the, the interesting component of this is without knowing anything about the frictional force, so don't assume it's mu mg, um, uh, I mean mu n, and uh, don't assume that it's constant based on position. Like, it could, it could be variable, it could be anything. Find the speed of the ball when it begins to roll without slipping. And the second part of this question is, find the kinetic energy you lost while slipping. So here I have a free body diagram set up for you. Um, so the field forces acting on it are Fg, and the contact force is acting on the normal force from the ground, which exactly balances Fg, um, and the frictional force, which acts in this direction because the ball is slipping in this direction. So the frictional force uh, opposes that motion. So I've chosen my sign convention, which is really important in this problem, um, to point upwards and to the right. The upwards part isn't as important as to the right. Um, and I've defined um, my positive, uh, positive rotation to be into the page. So my positive rotation is into the page. Right. Um, so here I have my sigma f statements and sigma tau statements. So my um, the net force acting on this object is the for the frictional force, and there's a negative sign here because it um, it acts in the opposite direction as uh, as our sign convention, which is to the right, right. So that's that's our sigma f statement. Our sigma tau statement, I alpha equals FFR, is because FFR is the only torque acting around the center of mass of the body, and um, it causes positive. Um, it causes a positive change in angular velocity. So uh, let's see what we can do with these equations. So the, one of the problems is that we don't know FF. So I'm going to circle all our unknowns. So these are all our unknowns in the problem. So what? So since we can't calculate each of these, um, uh, each of the a's and and alpha on their own. We're gonna to have to find some way to relate them, and that's and that should be simple because we have um, an FF term in each of them, and, and all these quantities are known, right? So let's let's go ahead and solve for a relation between a and alpha. So we have that m a is negative FF, so a is negative FF over m. So that's pretty straightforward. Um, and now let's solve this sigma tau um, equation. Uh, so we have i alpha is FF r. So alpha is FFR over I. So alpha is FFR over 2 fifths MR squared. And this cancels. So we have, um, so we have, um, I'm going to put over here. So alpha is FF over 2 fifths MR. And see, see the similarity here? We have A is FF over M, negative FF over M, and we have an FF over M here. So we can substitute A into here, or rather negative A into here, so that we have alpha is negative A over 2 fifths R. And we arrive at the relation that A is negative 2 fifths R alpha. So this is great. We have a relationship that r relates um, the linear and angular accelerations. But what we're concerned with is finding um, the final velocity, or rather the speed, but the same thing, since it's only in one direction. Um, we're concerned with finding the speed, or the velocity, um, when it begins to roll without slipping. So, the only way I see in order to convert uh, an equation involving accelerations to an equation involving velocities is to integrate both sides. Let's do just that. So, if we write this integral, I'm going to take our bounds of integration to be from 0 to t, where t is the time uh, the ball begins to roll without slipping. So that's when, um, that's when the frictional force ceases to exist. Uh, so that's when there's no more acceleration. So um, because otherwise, yeah, otherwise there would be an acceleration and then it'd have to keep accelerating without slipping, which is kind of weird. So uh, keep accelerating, which is kind of weird. So yeah, so we have to calculate this integral. But see, the nice thing about this is that um, uh, based on our definitions of acceleration, this integral is going to be our change of velocity from at time t 
uh, from time zero. So let's call our uh, velocity of time t v roll, and our velocity of time zero is v zero. Um, so this integral just simplifies to v roll minus v zero because it's a change in velocity from zero to t. And here we have uh, negative two fifths r times omega minus omega zero, but omega zero is zero because it it rolls uh, it slides without rolling. So this is just zero. So we have um, v roll is negative two-fifths our omega roll plus v zero. And at this point we can use our, our rolling constraint that v roll is um, omega r roll, uh, omega roll r, because that's that's the rolling without slipping constraint. So if we bring this up over here we have v roll is two-fifths our omega roll plus v zero. So uh, our v roll equals two fifths v roll plus v zero. Just a minute, I want to check if I didn't do something wrong here. Sorry, this is I forgot the negative here. There's a negative here. Yeah, so that's negative. So if I if I bring this over to the other side, then seven fifths our roll. V roll is uh, um, V zero, so we have V roll is five sevenths V zero. Yay! So we solved our first part of the problem without knowing anything about the frictional force. So I hope that kind of struck you as interesting that we can find this velocity even without knowing how the frictional force acts. Yeah. Now we're going to calculate the energy lost while while sleeping. So I'm going to put our the the value we got on on the back before. So we got V is 5 sevenths V0. And um, yeah, so now we have to find the work done by friction. Right, and the work done by friction is equal to, um, what, did, what did I write E like that? So the work done by friction is our um, final energy minus our initial energy. Right, so friction does a negative, does some negative work because it takes energy out of the system so that um, the final energy is less than the, the, less than the initial energy. But we really, really just care about um, the magnitude of the work done by friction. So, uh, yeah, so let's, let's go ahead and solve this. So um, we clearly have no potential, oh, no changes in potential energy, so we don't have to even have to consider that because we can just treat our, our potential energy equals zero line as the center of mass, and that just doesn't change throughout the problem. Like this, the energy just does not change during the problem. The potential energy. So all of our energy in both the initial and the final states is in our kinetic energy. So we can rewrite this as Kf minus Ki. Right. But um, the thing with rotation is that we can't just treat. We can't just think about the translational motion. We also have to think about the rotational motion. In this case. Um, both these, in this, this case, we, so we can write the kinetic energies as uh, the translational kinetic energy plus the rotational kinetic energy in this final case minus translational kinetic initial plus rotational kinetic initial. Right, so um, we can rewrite this as one half uh, mv roll squared. Because remember, we're considering when it starts to roll. We're, we're, cons we're concerned with that. Plus one half i omega roll squared minus one half m v zero squared, which is the translational energy. Because that's um, yeah, the the whole the speed of the ball is v zero when it begins to slip, and it has no rotational kinetic energy in the beginning because it um, slides without rolling. So, um, because of a rolling constraint, we can simplify this. Uh, so, we have m one half m v roll squared plus one half times two fifths m r squared. That's our um, moment of inertia, uh, and our oh, and our omega roll squared. So this simplifies to one fifth. But the thing with this is that um, because we know that v roll is o our omega roll then this this quantity becomes v roll squared right 
Uh, so we're left with um, one half mb roll squared plus one fifth mb roll squared minus um, one half mv zero squared. Finally, we, um, so we can simplify this to seven tenths mv roll squared. Uh, minus uh, one half mv zero squared. So now we have to uh, use the value we found in the previous problem that v roll v roll is five half five sevenths v zero. So if we substitute that into here, we're gonna get seven tenths times twenty five over forty nine mv zero squared minus one half mv zero squared. So we can cancel. This cancels. And this cancels. So we are left with um, we are left with negative five fourteenths. Uh, sorry, five fourteenths mv zero squared minus one half mv zero squared, which is negative one seventh mv zero squared. And that's the work done by friction.